we have here a finished dream room and some people put in there. You'll be putting taking photos of yourself and putting them in. We have a uh, if you have a green screen, it's the best to do. I do recommend that. Here are some items that I've collected. I'll be dragging them into the new document. I have not removed the backgrounds. So I'll be going through that as well to make it easier for everybody. First off, I'm going to start with File, New. I'm going to be doing 18 inches by 12 inches. Make sure you're working on inches. It's just easier. 300 resolution. Color mode RGB. And click Create. It is in a landscape. Just making sure, just to cover that. It is in landscape. So that way it's going to be a little bit easier to work with. I have it here. Next thing we're going to do is add a new layer. Right here you can see our layer. And I'm going to call it rectangle. So now I've got that, hit enter. I'm going to go over to the rectangular marquee tool right below the move tool. Create a rectangle. We can move it around. Now, if you don't like it, just continue to draw a new one anytime. So we have this one here. I'm going to now put a stroke on it. I'm going to place it slightly more towards the ceiling so I have more floor space to work with. Once again, if you do not like it, now's the time. Change it down, make it a little bit smaller. That's okay. I'm going to want some wall space there. So going up to Edit, Stroke here, and you guys see the color. I'm going to go with a 40 pixel, 40 pixel with and color I'm going to choose black it's going to stand out it's going to be easy to work with so it's a stroke of 40 color black location don't worry about it. it's in the center it won't make it much of a difference for us it's click OK and then I'm going to go to select deselect next I will be putting in a vanishing point I double click on the text to be able to change it. So I've added the stroke here. Now I'm gonna I've added my vanishing point as well. I'm gonna move this just below it. Click, left click and drag down for the vanishing point. I'm gonna go with a brush, maybe 60, and I'm gonna choose a bright color. In the color picker here, you can also double Click over here and get the same option. And make it about 60 here. 62. If you want a precise number, just click in here. Put in 60. This is the vanishing point. I'm kind of moving it. I'm placing it somewhat above the middle of it just so that we can have it coming down so everything's we're not looking down at everything next I will be going adding a new layer and we're going to be placing some lines in here so I'm not even going to name them we're going to be merging them with the rectangles shortly so I'm going over to your rectangle tool here, and we're going to use the line tool. Using the line tool, you see that I have it selected to shape. I have no fill on it, and a stroke of 40, same as the stroke on the back of the room. What's going to happen here is I'm going to click here on the vanishing point, draw through the corner, out through, out to the edge of the canvas, the white. Once that's done, new layer, and I'm going to do this a couple more times. You're going to have to apply the new layer. 
I'm going to turn off my, I'm going to close my tab group for the properties just so you can see the layers. It's more important at this point. Once again, on the bashing point, I'm going to go through the corner and over. We've got the next one. Repeat, add a new layer. And drag. Bashing point through the corner once again. So I've got this done. Now, what I'm going to do next, and if that property is open again, I'm just going to drag this out. I'm going to merge these layers here, the line layers here. Hold down shift. Move this up a little bit so you can see it better. Click on the top one. I'm going to hold down shift. Left click on the bottom one here. Right click. Merge shapes. Now it's still a shape. We're going to now go right click. Because we can't do anything with it right now. So, if I want to do anything to it, such as I'm going to go over to the eraser here. You see it's shape layer must be rasterized before proceeding. Rasterize shape. You can click OK. And it's been rasterized. Or if Control Z, if you don't know to do that, by chance, just right click on it. Rasterize layer. I'm going to make it bitmap. Once again. It is, that little rectangle in the square in the corner is gone, uh, indicating it was a shape. So I'm going to go now onto my rectangle here. Choose the magic wand. And I'm going to make sure contiguous is set. Otherwise, it's going to choose all the white. Clicking inside the rectangle here. We see it here. And I'm going to go up to the line. Click Delete. So now we have the lines of our room for the floor lines here and the ceiling. I'm going to now select, deselect, control D. I have the line selected and I'm going to go to the rectangle and I'm going to press shift and merge layers. <coughs> I'm going to be adding some colors in here. So you can see that we have a more dimensional room there, that there's a high, there's a dark wall, there's a medium wall, and there's a light wall. Going in here, I'm going to go to my paint bucket, right here below the eraser, paint bucket. If you see the gradient tool here, just right click on it, go to your paint bucket. Now any color wall you want, if I want to go, I'm going to go slightly different here, a little bit lighter, and I'm going to put a pure color here. My paint bucket. You guys see the vanishing point disappeared. We're going to be moving that up in a moment. And I'll choose one wall here to make it darker. So we went from a pure color here, almost pure, to a darker. Now we're going to go to a lighter color, a tint. We have our pure color, our shade, our shadow, darkened color, and our tint. I'm also going to put the ceiling in. It's just going to make it easier. And you can change these as long as you have them right here. And so I have my colors here. If there's not enough contrast, just change them. Moving my bashing point up here. Next, we're going to go be at, start adding things in here. So, I've got my pictures here, and I'm going to want to put the floor in. I've already picked out the, a tile like this. I chose one that's in a rectangle form. It's not already, looks like it's already on a floor. It's going to be just easier to work with. Changing over to my move tool. I'm going to drag straight up and over. Drag it down to about where I want it. You see I have it here moving it into position here and I can go pretty darn close and to cover that black line what I'm going to do next is edit 
transform, dis distort. Now, grabbing by the center will move it, keep it pretty much, you can move it like this, like it's a parallelogram. Hope that's the right term. Now I'm going to grab the corner over here. As I'm doing this, I'm questioning whether or not these lines are horizontal. One of those things. I have my rulers here. If you do not see the rulers, go to View, Rulers, and click on it, Control-R. And should you need to, you can right-click here to change your increments from pixels to inches. I'm leaving it at pixels for the moment. Now I'm going to drag down here, and I'm dragging down a guide seems to be matching up so I'm going to just drag it back up I don't need it anymore hit enter and we have our floor in here next thing I'm going to be doing is considering we're going to be putting in a door I think a door over here would be very nice it will cut match this one right here so I'm going to drag the door up and into it and back down. Now you see that this one has the excess around it the, from the image that we copied off the internet. So I'm going to use the magic wand here. Select. Hit delete. And select deselect. Go to the move tool. And I'm going to position this up here. I'm also going to make it to go Control T. That is Edit Free Transform. Bring it just straight up. Raise it a little bit. So it goes almost to the ceiling. Leaving a little distance, not too much. Hit Enter. I'm going to draw a line from the from the vanishing point over to this top corner so that you know the angle for it for the top of the door. The ceiling uh, where, the, where the floor meets the wall there will be the other line that we're not going to have to draw it's already there by default. So I'm going to add a new layer. We're going to be adding a lot of guide layers, guide layers. You can use any color brush. Prefer to use a hard round. I right click to get that. So once again, right click and the size. I'm going to make it 40. It's more of a guide layer. It's not, I don't want too big. So I clicked here, left mouse button, click. I'm going up here. I'm holding down shift now and, and I moved it without holding the left mouse button. I'm going to click here. I now have the angle that we're going to place it at. Going back to the Move tool, back onto the door layer. I will go to Edit, Transform, Distort. Drag straight down here. We can always use the guides to adjust that to see. And what I notice, and this is one of the things with the doors, once we do this, I've done it a few times, the doors appear massive. And if you're not sure about if the sides are even, Steven, they're even here. So I'm going to go to View, Show Grid. So I can see to line them up. Because I'm looking at this door, it's looking very big. And I kind of want to shrink it down a little bit. So we get these lines vertical and perpendicular to the floor. That's looking better. And if you need to, control plus to zoom in. And I'm going to use my line here, the guide here. And if it is not showing, I can already see that this one's off. I'm going to go to view show guides. 
check that because now they're starting to show even though the blue is not showing up well and I'm going to change the color of the guide so I'm going to go to edit I'm in the middle of pre uh, with preferences here you see it's kind of not working because I'm have the transform in midway so I'm just going to adjust this first and I'll go show you the guide how to change the guide color so once I've got that done, I'm going to hit enter. I will turn this one off. And the guides, which are hard to see, I'm going to go to edit preferences, guides grid slices. And you see guides on for the canvas, cyan. I'm going to go light red or magenta, something. Magenta sounds good, click OK, and they're a little bit easier to see, a little more contrast. Should you not want them, you can always pull them off. I'm going to pull them off now. I don't want them in the way for the rest of the this. Now, the next thing we're going to be working with is a window. You're replacing a window over here. I can place one over here. That's an option, too. But I have my window here. Move tool, already selected, drag up and down. I'm going to clean this one up too. Control plus. You see how this color here yeah, is a little difficult to see, and I'm going to just use the magic wand here. And you see that's kind of selecting everything. I can lower the tolerance down, make it five. And it's kind of just set, taking out sections here. And I want to get this done fast, so select, deselect. I'm going to use the rectangle marquee tool. Hit delete. Move it down. You can redraw it if you want, but I'm just moving it. Delete. Go over here once again. Press delete, and once again, delete. That's looking better. Control zeros. Select, deselect. Go to my move tool. Move it into position where I want it. I'm thinking somewhat towards the ceiling here. Control T. I'm going to drag straight down at this moment. Hit enter. Now, I will be once again using guidelines, just like we did with the door. So I'm going to add a new layer right here. Let me turn these off. Click on a left mouse button. Click on the vanishing point. I'm going to click on the top corner of the window up here. So you can see that's going to be the angle going down for the top of it. And for the bottom of it, I'm going to click on the vanishing point again. And go over to here, the bottom corner here. You can see that angle there. <coughs> go back to my window layer here. Edit. Transform to stored. Drag straight down. The guides in the grid will help you with this. The grids will help as well as the guides. Use them. I might pull this out just to be even with the grid here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Control plus. Got that done. Hit enter. Now that I've got that done, I'm going to move on to the next section, Control Zero, turning off these lines here. I'm next going to place in, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking we need a bed. So we're going over here, I've got this bed already picked down. Go to my Move tool, drag the bed in. This one, you're going to find uh, the magic wand here. It's covering over the bashing point. 
but the magic wand will be helping with this, and we're going to make this fit the vanishing point pretty darn close. And you see here, we're on tolerance 5. We have contiguous on, because contiguous is anything that's attached that's going to grab. So if there's a highlight here of the same color, the same white, it will not attach over here. I'm going to hold down shift, click here. There's a few spots I see. Now that's pretty close. Hit delete, select, deselect. Deselect. Start to move it over to the side over here. You see how this bed this bed's pretty big. So I can either go up here and or over here. I'm gonna just place it here for the moment. I will be going to edit, transform, distort, and bring this up a little bit towards the top to even this out. Try to get the corner there lined up, even though we have that there. Drag down a little bit. Pull this up over here. And this will not be totally going to the vanishing point here because it would be a very big bed, very high. And I'm gonna, that's one of the ones where I'm gonna let it fudge a little bit. And you see how I adjust this angle here, it's gonna come down, but it's never gonna make it perfect. but it's getting closer. And I'm looking at the tops here to make sure that they line up with the, with the grid here and the bottom down here. As I pull this down a little bit, Hit enter. Keep in mind, you can always do edit transform. The bottom's pretty good, the top's are close. So we have that done now. The bed's in place. Next, we're going to go over to putting in a dresser. I'm going to go with the dresser. It's one of the harder things to do. I chose one with sides on it. It's a three-quarter view. And the dresser here, I'm going to place it on this wall here. So I will go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. And once again, I'll zoom in, Control Plus, use a magic wand to remove the background. I'm on tolerance of five. It seems to be getting everything without tear, uh, taking out pieces of the dresser. That, that's looking good. I will select, deselect. And. Place it, use the move tool. Place the bottom over here. This is going to be the tricky part. I'm going to be using the corner down here. I'm going to want to flatten this here. But I'm also going to want to put the top in. And I am going to want to use a guideline this time. New layer up here. Hold down shift. And I'm placing it slightly above the height of a doorknob. Not huge. It's not a huge. But it's going to be big enough. I will then go back to the layer over here of the dresser. Edit. Free transform, 
just going to raise it up a little bit. Save some time. And then, so you see it's almost there. Bring it down a little bit too. Okay. Hit enter. We're going to go to the edit perspective warp tool. Edit perspective warp. It's going to give you an uh, ability to draw grids. Let me show you this. So they're going to connect and you're going to be able then to edit the shape of it. I'm going to do three points here. Something like the bed is, has one side here, one side here, another side here, and a side here, and a side here. So there's many more sides. It is much more hard. It's much harder to do. I would not. I would recommend it with something simpler. Draw it out. Get it close to the dimensions. Line up the corners. Zoom in as need. Control plus. Make sure you get the whole thing now. Leave a, you can leave a little bit extra down here and stuff. You just don't want to leave huge amounts. Next is I'm going to draw a new one here. These attach almost automatically. Otherwise, you'll drag them. I'm sure you're going to see what happens when it doesn't in a moment. And I'm going to go over here. And then finally... So those two did drag, but this will jump to it. I'm going to drag this one, click on it. <laughs> and I'm just making sure I'm not losing anything here. If you need to turn off your your line, you can't do it at this point. Just test it then. It doesn't work. So, what, we're ready now. We've got the, the grid done already. Now I'm going to go to Warp. And this one, I'm going to bring this side up over here. Get it as equal, even with the red as possible. Bring this side up here. Keeping in mind the lines here and the distances. If I have to pull this out a little bit, that's okay. Looking to see if it's almost even parallel on both sides. And this one here, it looks pretty good. So once you've got that done, hit the check. Turn off the line. Dresser's done. I'm going to choose now to put in We've got the door done, we've got the window done, we've got the bed done, and we've got the dresser done as well as the floor. I'm going to bring in a piece of artwork, one of which, if you're doing, and it will depend where you place it. Go into my move tool, I'll drag this in here. And this one you place it on this wall, there is no changing it. So don't worry about it. I'm going to put one right up here. I'm going to clean, duplicate this one. I'm going to put another one over here as well. You'll see why in a moment. Now with this one. Wrong one, but I'm going to clean this one up first. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, folks, so I'm going to back over here, select on the inside here, make sure you're always on the right layer. That's going to be, so I'm going to clear both of these out here. I could have just deleted one here, but I will go over here and do this one as well. Well, 
have this here. So we have this here, these done. Oh, and you see that these are a little sloppy. So I'm going to do Control Z, Control Z. So that return it back. Raise that tolerance up a little bit to 30. Zoom in a little bit. That's looking a whole lot better. Then I'm going to go up here once again. Delete. And delete. Okay. Done. Control D or select deselect. Zero. Control zero. Next, I'm going to go place a Photoshop document in. I'm going to go File. Place Embedded. Do not use Place Linked because a, li a link can be broken. And then you'll have a blank spot where you placed your picture. So, Place Embedded. Excuse me. Dang. I have a city right here. So I'm going to go with this one. I hope this is a good one. I'm going to place it, select it, click place. Give it a moment. It's a, still has some guidelines on it. You see now it has the bounding box on it. I'm going to use that to reduce it in size. Make it fit inside the picture frame, but I'm going to overlap it. Hit enter. And then move it below by left click and drag, holding down the left mouse button, click and dragging it. So it is in one image here. I can still go to my move tool here and move it around a little bit or control T. Continue to move it in position. There might be something that I do not want taken off, hidden away. And I'll hit enter. Now these two, since I can't, I'm going to want to put a shadow on here in a moment. So I'm going to merge these two together. I have this one selected. I'm going to hold down shift and click here then right click merge layer now I'm gonna put a drop shadow here right now so you can see double click if you cannot get it that way sometimes it doesn't work by double clicking over here not on the text not on the image double click over here to get it or go to FX, drop shadow. And this window here, you're going to see it. This is going to show you your light, uh, the angle from the light. I'm going to be placing one on the ceiling about up over here shortly. That's going to be the next thing. Do not use global light. It will ch Every time you change this angle, it will change the angle for every object that has global light selected. We have a slight shadow down here. That's enough. If you need more, add more. Watch out with that spread. And you see it over here and here. And size there. You can go darker. Maybe go a little bit darker there. Just easier to see it. And opacity. Not incredibly dark, but I want something there. 35% about, 34% so it can be seen. Control, click OK. Now the next one here, you can either right click on it with the move tool, it's going to tell you, layer 9, copy 4, or you can just click there. I'm going to go to edit, Control T, Edit Transform, right click, rotate 90 degrees. And this one, 
and put down here. I don't want to, I'm just not, I would normally put it up here, but I don't want to cover the vanishing point. I don't want it distracting everybody. Hit enter, and I'm going to drag in. My picture here of Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean, you might know him as. Once again, drag it below this time, save some time, control T, edit transform, and hit enter. And I will merge these two as well. Right click, merge layers, FX, drop shadow, and you can see it's going to be this, just about the same, so I'm going to leave it. Click OK. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, zooming out a little bit, or well, Control Zero, I'm going to start turning some of these items off because I've used them just for the sake of it. I'm going to bring the chair in. I'm placing it over here. The chair is a tricky one, given the white. Magic wand here. It's doing pretty well. I'll hit delete. Select, deselect, or control D. Edit free transform. And I'm going to make it bigger. I'm holding down shift. It, some, by default, it will maintain proportions. However, I turn that off, so I'm holding down shift. You can also see here this pivot point. I'll be showing point of reference. I'll be showing you that in shortly. So the chair here, I'm going to right click, flip horizontal, place it right here. Hit enter. Our chair is in position. If anything is too small, too big, just make it, think about ways to make it fit. So I will go turn off the chair now, since I don't need that. And select, deselect, because I accidentally did that. Control D, move back to the move tool. Bring in light switch. This one is kind of dirty with all the background here, and the magic wand won't work on this. And just to show you, select like this. It's going to select sections of it, not the whole thing. I would have to hold down shift and hope. Now, you can also do that or try that or the ma uh, marquee tool, rectangular marquee. Bring it over, delete, move it down, delete and over. Delete. And this is a big light switch right now. Okay, zoom in. Control D. Up. Oh, Control Z. Bring it back and move it over a little bit. Hopefully that will work. Nope. Didn't get rid of it, so I'm going to go back in here. Just draw it in again. Delete. And I see it on the side here as well. So I'm going to go back and touch it up. Select, deselect, or control D, control zero. Moving this into position here. That's a big light switch. I'm going to first control T, reduce it in size. Hit enter, place a, a layer above it for a guideline that we're going to draw with the paintbrush. And this one, I'm going to have to do it for both top and bottom here. I'm going to do it from here, clicking, left mouse button, click. Moving it over to here, I hold down shift and then I click again. I'm, I'm not pressing the mouse left mouse button while I'm doing it. I'm not dragging and moving it. So I click there. 
And now I'm going to move it again. I've taken my hand off the left, left mouse button. I'm going to move it again, going over to here, and I'm going to hold down Shift. And you see that we're going to want to fit this in here. Click on the light switch. Edit, free, edit, transform, distort. Zoom in a little bit. Bring it up here and over here. And hit enter. And I can turn this off now. So I have that done. Go back to my pictures here. I will turn off the light switch. I'm going to go on the light here. Go to the move tool. Drag it in. And this light here is a little... We're kind of looking at it from an angle that's not correct, so we're going to fix that. But first I'm going to use the magic wand. Delete the corners here. Delete. Move it into position. Hold down the space bar so I can just move the whole thing down. You get the hand tool. It's a shortcut. Hand tool's right here otherwise, so for moving things. Select, deselect. Edit. Free transform. Control T. I'm going to pull it down a little bit here. And this light looks huge. Position it, hit enter. That's our light. And I'm going to show how to create a lighting effect here by adding, so it looks like it's actually just going, coming down over here right now. So I will create a new layer, go to the marquee tool, rectangular marquee this time, Zoom in a little bit, and I notice that this is going to be coming here, and it's going to be sitting about here, where it's going to land on the floor, because I'm looking at the angles here, coming down where it meets the floor about here. Go from the widest width of the circle, go straight down. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter, just so that we have a little more room there. Choose a color you'd like for it. Since it's white, I'm going to choose white. Using the foreground color picker. Paint bucket. Go in. You can choose any color for this. We'll lower the opacity down. About 30, 40 percent, 30 percent or so. You can barely see it, but I'm going to make it dark again so you can see it. And I'm going to select the select, control D, edit, transform, distort first. I'm going to make it into a trapezoid by pulling it straight out here and here. And now I'm going to give it a curve. Curve the top, and I'm going to curve the bottom of it using right-clicking and using the warp tool. Lining it up with the grid here. Hopefully, it's going to be a little bit more even. Then I'm going to go up over here. Same idea. Not, I'm just pulling it in a little bit, so it's not too big of a, a loop here. Hit enter. And with this one, I will lower the opacity down. And to give the highlight on the floor so that it looks like it's projecting, you'll see it with a flashlight all the time, I will use the elliptical marquee tool. Right-click on the rectangular marquee, draw the line here. And add a new layer. Make sure you add a new layer. Almost didn't do that. Once again, paint bucket. And edit, 
transform distort. I'm going to go with distort first. And I'm going to lower the opacity so I can see what I'm looking at because I'm kind of wanting to get these lined up here. And you see, it's not, not totally lining up. So what I'm going to do next, instead, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. Position it up there, right click, warp. We'll bring it up a little bit. Use the arm here, the handle, the handle here. Bring it over. And out and round it out there. Once you have that in position, Hit enter, select, deselect, and you have your circle there, your light done there. So we have the light done. I will be placing the computer on next. Oh, no, this isn't a computer, sorry, it's the TV. Put the TV above the, above the dresser. And this one, I'm going to make it larger, easier to see. Hit enter. And magic wand, see how this works on it. It's You see how it's eating into it. I don't want that because when I hit delete, parts of it is missing of the legs, etc. So I'm going to do control Z and lower this down on the tolerance. I'm going to go to tolerance. See, it's highlighted there. I'm going to make it five. That's much better. Delete. Select, deselect. Move it into position and edit transform, flip horizontal. It's a big TV, we're going to make it smaller. Edit transform, scale. Start to bring it down into position. You guys notice the legs are a little distorted. I'm going to leave them. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Just trying to place them on the top here and here at the moment. Once we get that done, Pull this away from the wall a little bit and make it a little bit more in proportion. Hit enter. Add a guideline above it, layer above it, so I can put a guideline in. I'm going to do one on the bottom, too. Probably won't need it. Since it's on the dresser top, it's going to be pretty close. Paint. Go to the paintbrush. It's pretty close. I'm going to go check here as well. Bring this up. You can see this is the top is off. So going back to the TV layer. Edit free transform. Actually, I'm going to go to transform distort. Save some time. Zoom in. And I'm going to be playing with it. Now, if the legs on the TV are really in your way, 
I see it for me that I'm going to make this a wall hang, uh, TV that hangs on the wall in a moment. The guide is here. It looks good. I'm going to hold down space bar, bring the hand tool up. And use this line here. Hit enter. Now, turn off the white guidelines. We don't need them anymore. But you see how it's kind of getting in the way here. That we've got a floating TV. I don't want that. So I'm going to use the elliptical mark, a polygonal uh, lasso tool. Polygonal lasso tool. I and I'm on the TV layer. Click on the vanishing point. Drag it out to the bottom here. Pretty close. Hit enter. Delete. Now I still see that I have a little bit there. Click. I'm going to click again. That's all with the left mouse button. Click again with the left mouse button. Hit enter and delete. Select, deselect. TV's in. So we have a couple things here. Going back to the dream room picture here. Turn off the TV. We can turn off Mr. Bean. We're not using him anymore. Stereo. I'm going to the move tool. I'm going to drag that in. And not everything has to be in perspective. I'm just going to leave this on the floor. Scroll in, use or you control uh, control plus. And you see this one is kind of leaving a little bit on the bottom there. I'm going to raise. And if you don't see it right here, here's a shadow around it. I'm going to raise the tolerance up to about 33. 33, let's try it again. Better, but still not fantastic. Hit delete. Now, I'm going to go to the move, uh, go over here. Click again. And you see the shadow it's going to grab there. Let's see how it looks. Control, select, deselect. And since this is in front of the light, I'm going to drag this layer down below the light. So that way it's not looking like it's coming in front of it. All right, let's turn a few more things off here. I put on auto select so that I can just click on them very fast. I don't always use auto select. As you can see, you can always right click. Now, TV, uh, the laptop is next. I'm going to turn off auto select. Place it on the bed. Please do not place your laptops on the bed. It's a, it's a fire hazard. It's also not good for your laptops. They, they overheat. They get filled with all the particulate that's on your bed, all the fuzzies. So it's not good. We'll slow it down. So once I got that done, I'm going to go to select, deselect, and use the eraser tool to get rid of these shapes here. If your eraser is too small, you can go up here to change the size of it, to make it larger. If it's still not big enough, you can right click. I'm going to make it right click a little bit here. Going back over to here, we've got it. Edit transform. Flip horizontal. And edit transform scale. Bring it up. You can always use free transform for a lot of these things. Now this one has a tendency to look a little bit like it's a 
like it is floating right if you leave it like this so we're gonna want the bottoms here and I'm gonna make it much smaller because that looks like a huge laptop hit enter bring in the this is our I use this one for the crown molding this this crown molding is easy to use it's a front view here it's not angled and the edges I'm just gonna cut off so when I go here I'm gonna right click bring it up here drag once again <coughs> zoom in magic wand let's get rid of the excess delete Select, deselect, or Control D. And I'm going to chop off the edges. These edges we don't need. They're just going to get in the way. Go to the rectangular marquee tool here. And just use this here. Hit delete. Then drag over here. Same thing. Delete. We have a nice piece of it. I would avoid anything with little decorations in here. A that will get stretched. Anything looking uh, like circles or anything like that, floral arrangements will be stretched over a long distance. They will not work so well. Select, deselect, control zero. Bring this up here. Position it over the black line here, top here. Control T, drag it out. Hit enter. And I'm going to drag one over here, holding down the Alt key to duplicate it. Move this up a little bit. And over here as well, finally. If you're not sure, you can always select all, all of these here. You can see this come up here. And I'm going to use the top one here. They're going to line them all up, even Steven. Save you a little bit of time. And select on this one, I'm going to angle this. You can use a guide layer here. And I'm going to put a guide layer a line from here to the bottom corner here up and over to here. It's just going to help me be a little bit more accurate. Going from the corner through here. And I'm going to adjust that. Same over here. These are just going to be guides here to help us see. Right click, choose the layer. And when I go to hit Control T, you see a circle here. I can drag this and it will change the pivot point from where it is. Control Z, Control Z. If I leave it to where it is and I rotate it, it's just going to look like a fan or a propeller. Control Z. If you do not have this, go to, I'm going to hit Enter first to get out of that. Edit Preferences, Tools. Show reference point when using transform. Check that off and you'll be able to use it. Click OK. So I'm going to go edit. Free transform. Move the pivot point, reference point. Rotate this up a little bit. To the line here. Then I'm going to right click. Distort and drag this down a, a wee bit. Lining it up with the paint bucket there. And I'm going to zoom in because I know what's happening here. I'm going to do it right now. This is coming 
There's going to be a hole there, and I'm going to want to adjust it so you don't see it. And give it an angle. It almost got, it's going to look similar to what you're going to see. Not perfect, but it's good enough. The next one, we're going to do a control zero. Same idea. Control T. Move the pivot point, the reference point. Space bar and rotate. Now I'm ready to use the distort tool. Bring it down a little bit. Hit enter. Turn off my guideline here. <laughs> so that we have some perspective there. Bring the people in. I gotta bring my pet in, so. People and pets, they're good. Bring the person in here. I'm actually gonna bring the alligator in first. No, I don't think happiness is in control Z. Didn't get on the right layer. I didn't right click. I was still on the old layer. And I had turned off auto select. So you see, I'm gonna drag this in. And I'm going to move this one above the lights here, so you can drag this above. And my little alligator here, I'm just going to use the magic wand. And looking here, there's a lot that's being, that's being ignored. The tolerance is high, but I can always go make it try 55. It's pretty close, leaving a little bit there. I see some, looking at the foot, the foot is going to be missing some sections here. I selected that and selected too much control Z. And I don't want that. Hit delete. Select, deselect. Here we go with the eraser and I'm going to make it quite large. That's really big. Now, this alligator looks good, but he's, he needs a little work. So I'm going to duplicate the layer, right click on the layer, and duplicate the layer. Click OK. Make it, I'm making a shadow for him. So I'm going to go to Image Adjustments. Hue Saturation. I've on the duplicate. Change the lightness to black. Click OK. Move it down below. You'll see why in a second. When I go to Edit. Transform Distort. Bring this up a little bit. Bring it up. This alligator there is going to have to get his feet adjusted. Now you see we've got some sections here. You can see it where this shadow is over here a little bit more, and I'm going to want to adjust that. You can right click, try warp. Warp is your friend. Click here, let's see if we can pull this over here a little bit more. It's still not going to get this area here. Oh, perfect, so Hit enter, and I'm just going to take an eraser to it. Just so we have nothing sticking out over there and lower the opacity in the 40s there. Our people will get me dragged in. 
We're going to do the same thing with them. Go to the move tool. I'm going to place the person here, right here. Up, oh, then get that layer. Control Z. Drag him in. And I'm also going to drag the other one in, and you guys see why in a second. The standing person. So I've got him. I'm going to turn him off and. Oh, come on. I'm getting tired. So we got him here. He's really small. So I'm going to make him control T. And you see here, I'm making him about the height of the door. Not going to make him too tall. Just about uh, door height. Hit enter. I'm going to do uh, move this up on the layers here so he's not behind the TV. I'm going to do control shift, right bracket, bring him to the front. You could also just drag him up here. Magic wand. And I'm seeing now it's deleting a lot of inside the shirt there, so I'm going to bring it down to 33. Hit delete. And select, deselect. So he's here now, but he doesn't have a shadow. So I'm going to right click here, duplicate layer, click OK. I'm looking at the light source. It's coming from over here. The shadow will be cast over here. So on the bottom one, I'm just going to use the bottom one and go to edit. Image adjustments, hue saturation, that's image adjustments, hue saturation. And make the lightness dark. So you can see it. That's what it looks like. You could have done the top one and just dragged it down too. Then edit transform distort, grab from the top of the head, bring them down and position under his feet. Once again, the eraser will be good for this. Bring it over here a little bit. Hit enter. Use the eraser. Get rid of over here. And then over here. And lower the opacity. Yeah. And then where you've got that like that. Looking good. And the reason why I did him first, he's standing. This person, I have no reference point. And I want to make them the same. So I'm moving him, control Z, move it back, right click, choose the person in the chair. When I enlarge him, after I clean off his background, and I'm going to drag him all the way to the top, I'm going to want to remove, make him the same size, torso wise, at least pretty close. Magic wand. Let's zoom in, see what we're missing. And it's going over his sh shoulder there, so I'm going to lower the tolerance down. Making it five. I want to be very, very intolerant of anything that's not the white there. Hold down shift and click. I'm going to have to clean him up a little bit, but I'm going to, so I'm going to press delete first. Hold down the space bar, go in. And you can see that tolerance is a little too intolerant and it's not showing enough, so I'm going to make it 15. Let's go 33 here. See? Okay. I can do that. 
or I'm just going to go over to the polygonal lasso tool here. Click. 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 Click a few more times. That's the left click. Hit enter. Delete. If I need to, I can always move it left and right using the arrow keys on the keyboard. Or, control D, I'm going to use the eraser tool. And I'm going to make it much smaller now. I'm holding down shift while I'm doing it to get straight lines there. Holding down shift and left mouse clicking. If you miss a little bit, go back over again. Also, I do recommend making many little clicks because then you can control Z if you make a mess. You miss something. It's easier. Moving along here. Most everything seems to be pretty good here. I'm going to leave some of it here just because to move this along. There will be pieces that you'll never get. I, I won't have, you'll have to spend more time on. Control Z is your friend if you make a mistake. And making the brush smaller. You can see here I made it very small. Where you can barely see it. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger now. Drag it out so I can see how big it is. And I'm done with him for now. Control zero. You can see he's too far too small. So I'm moving over to the move tool here. Placing him uh, ah, over here. You guys see he looks like a mini person. A mini me version of him. And I'm going to just bring his torso up to size. And the head as well. Just as a comparison. So that they're kind of similar. It don't have to be exact. Don't want to make him the same height. I just want to make it so that the head is similar. So this person isn't too small. Now I've got him here. I'm going to sit him on the chair. Hit enter. And I'm just going to place a drop shadow. I can double click here or go FX. Drop shadow. Moving it so I can see the light source coming over here. And you can now see it here. Click OK. The chair will be the next. Same idea. Double click here. Drop shadow. And since I just did him, the shadow is going to be pretty close. It will be good. And right click on the bed. So we're working with the shadows now. Drop shadow here. Now this one, the bed is interesting. We have one against the wall here. And 
I'm going to put another one. So over here, make a new drop shadow here. So I have one that is at my coming down here, and I have another one that will be over here. You can change the angles on both of them. So you have one below the shell, below the bed, and on the side against the wall. Click OK. And you guys see there are two drop shadows there. If you want to turn one off, you can see which one is doing what. <coughs> I've got the shadows here. I'm going to click on the window, do the same thing. Drop shadow. And that one is going, working with the bed pretty well. So click OK. Dresser. Oh, no, that's the wall. Ignore the wall. Going on the dresser. Same thing. FX. Drop shadow. And since it's using the one that I did last, I'm going to stick, move from one side. I was kind of finished this side of the room first, except for the laptop, I remember. So I have the drop shadow here. And it's going to go against the wall there. Quick. And right click on the door, do the same thing. It's going to have a little shadow over here. Got it over here. Click OK. You see the shadow right here. You move it, you'll see a change. Click OK here. Right click on the TV. FX. Drop shadow. We have the shadow here now. Right click on the boom box, the radio, the stereo. You see it's throwing the shadow there, but I'm going to push it over a little bit more so it's being pushed behind it, not coming forward. I would rather have that one pushed back against the wall. Click OK. And finally the laptop here. And once again, FX, drop shadow. And you can see this one's kind of coming out far, so it's not a big object. So I'm going to bring the distance in. So the shadow's over there. Click OK. Checking back over here. Do I have anything left? No. Nothing's left. So. This is the original, one of the ones I did here, once again. And here's the one I did with the same resources. I hope this helped you. Working with one point perspective. You can at any point if you need to. I'm going to right click on here, go to vanishing point layer, labeling a little layer helps. I can always turn that off and then you don't see it. So we have our layers here. We have just about everything done. But please make sure you save it. File save as. And it would be nice if I spelled that right. Click save. Please make sure you put your name in the bottom right hand corner, which if you're not sure about that, go to the text tool here. And I'm using 12-point text. It's more for identification.
Now, we notice that it's not showing up. So I'm going to double click on the T, the window here, the, the thumbnail. See, it's highlighted. I'm going to go up here to the white box, make it black. White, on, white text on. White tile doesn't show up very well. And also it's below the floor. So once I get that up there and I move it into the corner here, I will save it again. File, save. And you now have your dream room. I hope this helps everybody. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you for watching.